Yo, welcome back to the lunch table, Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz. You already know where to hit that subscribe button, man. For this next podcast, um, I feel weird. <laughs> weird in the sense that I've been listening to this man do his thing for over a decade now. During the hyphy movement, he had one of the most iconic songs, um, I Got Grapes. Hey. The Nump Yard, you dig? And there was a couple other slappers on that, too. He has a new album out right now yeah. called Lapu Lapu. Shout out to all my Filipinos, man. What's happening? Nump. The Gorilla Pino Pope. What's That's good, right. bro? The Pope, man. Gorilla Pino Pope here to give everybody <laughs> hope. Nump, you feel me? Take a picture. You feel me? Nump Trump. I still rock with that. You still but rock with the Nump I, Trump? I tried to buy that, but it's like when bro became president. See, I was fucking with Trump when he was the apprentice. So you could, uh, if you dig deep and go on YouTube, so hit, hit, hit subscribe now with his shit, and then go look back. I had a video called Jump on the Scrape. Yeah. And I was Nump Trump, the rap apprentice. Not the apprentice, the rap apprentice. Gotcha. And you. I was had the wig on, all that shit. And I was really rocking with the Nump Trump. Like, I was really, I back then, bro, during the hyphy shit, I would really rock out with some wigs. I was on some, like you said, this is weird. I was on my weird shit. I mean, Mac Dre was kind of like that, too, with the Ronald Dragon Dragonomics. Yeah. You know what he, I mean? He was, bro. We was just, man, but we was characters in our own lane. Yeah. Our mamas, man. And I. I but man. then nowadays, you can't really rock with the Numb Trump too much. I anymore, cannot, huh? bro. So what happened was, I was just getting, like, weird emails and weird-ass tweets and weird DMs uh... and just motherfuckers banging on me, and I'm just like... Body, like I don't, I'm not even registered to vote right now. Do you? Are you? Do you no, know? Who, are you talking to the correct <laughs> Trump? Because I am Nump Trump. So then, body. So I, one day I just, one day I just flipped my name to the Nump underscore. You feel me? Yeah. Like you film me? Because it sound like you feel me? Yeah. You feel me? Well, that bro. You feel so me? What, you feel so me? then, like you were getting like a whole bunch of like hate emails and tweets and we, all weird that weird shit, shit, man. Ah, just man. like thinking I'm with the politics. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I went to the you feel me. You know what I'm saying? The only reason why I changed my IG name to that, cause like we from the Yay area where we, we get we get irked if like a motherfucker steal our shit. Cause you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? A lot of the lot of the uh, terminologies and slanguage sometimes floats around. Then we then we don't run with it and it be old mm-hmm. to us. And then, then boom, it take off like it take off like a year. It's or SoCal two years or later, something yeah. like that. And then they give man. So I be on that fuck it. I'm making it my IG name. You feel me? You feel me. I will say though, like I, I remember trying to find your Instagram for the first time, and Ooh. it was it was bro, you are so complicated to find on Instagram. It's like nump underscore you underscore film underscore me underscore beast mobile. And I'm just like and I just looked at this like if I didn't fuck with you, it'd be so hard to fucking find. Find you, bro. And, and the worst shit now with IG is if you get shadow banned, where if you post some some shit where they don't fuck with you, I had posted my new grills and I got it in trouble for that shit. I don't know what it was. What? I put tap in. They probably thought I was selling some motherfucking designer. Uh, I don't know what's going on with you, Instagram, but I was just trying to show off my new teeth. And next thing you know, I'm on the shadow ban. So when you're on the shadow ban, that, you have to really type that shit out for a motherfucker to tag you. Gotcha. And this oh. is at and this is at a time when Lapu Lapu just dropped eleven one. So I was irked, man. But so that makes sense then, because sometimes when I be trying to tag people, it doesn't show up right but away. But you still follow them. You follow yeah. Me. So oh, okay. So I had to Google all this shit. I'm, I Google everything. Got you. I Google. Everything. I do gotta ask you though, where does the uh, Beast Mobile come in? So check it out, man. So. I ain't really Lapu Lapu is like maybe shit. I ain't dropped a solo project by they since Konichiwa, mm-hmm. and Konichiwa, Konichiwa was just if you we're gonna put that artwork up or whatever. I'm I'm riding I'm riding a sirachi bottle, right like a rocket ship, yeah. and I got like uh, two pins like chopsticks holding some weed. <laughs> So it looked like I, felt, I just felt like it was some Asian. But the real reason why I called it Konichiwa on my mama was, so I was at my partner's house that do socks. Okay. And I was like, bro, what's all these extra socks you have here, right? And he had all these Sirachi socks on my mama, bro. So at the time, I'm making my artwork, and we just had me like sitting, holding, really real talk, I was just sitting holding the nugs up. It looked like I was just sitting down. Yeah. So when I seen that this fool had these socks, these Sirachi socks, I'm like, I called the art dude like, bro, have me riding a um, put the artwork with me riding a sriracha, a sriracha bottle. bottle, sriracha or sriracha, sriracha. I be saying sriracha. sriracha. It's all good. I, I knew yeah. what you meant though. Yeah, yeah it's weird. So then, uh, <laughs> so I did. I was like, bro, let me cop all these. So what I had did on a business move was buy my CD now and you get a free pair of sriracha socks. Ah, and then, so okay, if you okay. all my business people out there, you want to check the numbers. It's, so it's like a dollar to make a CD. The socks probably cost me three dollars, and then I'm dumping them for dub. So there you, go. you see the margin on there. But then people are going to look at it and be but like, oh, They're shit. looking at it like, oh, shit, steal. I can't. Steal, I, I, came I came up. up. I fucking get a free pair of socks. I'm really selling you the socks. But yeah. I'm saying buy the CD, get a 
free pair of socks. And so I dropped that shit with the... I was like, fuck it. I'm, put me on a Sarashi bottle. We'll call it Konnichiwa. And that's how the whole... <laughs> shit be popping off like that in my that's brain. No, man. That, that, he be putting you on game, man. That's how you flip the shit. So reason why I said that, that's, I've been on my business shit lately, buddy. I took a little break on the music thing. Just like, you know, I, mean, I was always doing music. Like, I'm a sound engineer, so I'm always in the mm-hmm. lab. But, you know, I, I took a little break, started doing like the Thizzler Start doing a Thizzler podcast, news, too, yeah, hard yeah. For, too Hard For Radio podcast, started doing Thizzler News. Then I kept it pushing and started working with Smokeland, and I helped build their brand doing my own podcast with them. And in between the time of doing all this, I had tapped in with the owner of Beast Mobile, the CEO. Mm. And basically, Beast Mobile is a cell phone service, like a Metro, like a Boost, like a Cricket. But at, what makes us different from everyone else is that we have an application that comes with, with the service. Okay. So... You're sharing your data every day with Facebook, and you're showing them, hey, I'm checking in here, and I'm eating here, and they're like, oh, cool, so now they know where you're at, right? You're doing that for the F. Just use the app for free. We do that. We we see your data, and we give you money back onto your Beast Mobile account for sharing your data with us. Got and, and, you. And, and the turnaround is, it's like, oh, so now we know Nico likes to go get... Uh, what is this right here? Coffee. Let's, Coffee, let's, yeah. yeah. So we see, oh, you over there? Now I'm sending you a push notification straight to your phone saying, oh, if you come here tomorrow, we'll do a buy one, get one half off because we know through that. Got and then that's how, the, that's how the ecosystem works. Got and we're just trying to do it to where we feel mm-hmm. at Beast Mobile, cell phone service shouldn't be, you shouldn't be paying a monthly bill at all for cell phone service. We feel that. Mm. You, you sharing so much data and making so much money to all these companies off mobile ad space that you should just have free cell phone service. So oh, that's shit. what we're trying to offer with Beast Mobile. Use the app through the Beast Mobile phone service. We have to use that platform. You can't just download it and just yeah. start using the app. You have to have Beast Mobile phone service, so, and boom. Now we're giving you an opportunity to, to engage and earn money, which you use that money to pay for your cell phone bill. Or you could go overboard, and we got prepaid debit cards, though. People are just swiping on their card using it like a prepaid credit card. So then how does Beast Mobile make money, then, if you guys are always giving back to the people? But see, the, like we get it, we get a chunk. You get a chunk. Gotcha. It, it's, okay. Everyone there eats. We go. There we Everybody go. eats. Everybody eats. And of course, it's like we have monthly plans. Also, like we our cheapest plan right now is an eight dollar a month plan, a limited call and text. Oh shit! So it may not be a demographic for me and you, but there's cats out there. There's like, cats who need the shit. There's like our lolas mm-hmm. that would just all they need is call and text. They don't use data. <laughs> they don't need the FaceTime. I mean, now they learn it. <laughs> I, I don't know, bro. Every time I FaceTime my Lola, like she's always yeah. like on the bottom left hand of the screen. I'm just like, yeah. I'm trying to see her face. <laughs> like, just move it down just a little bit. You're just seeing the moo moo. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But so yeah, man, that's how I tapped it with Beast Mobile. That became my um, my gotcha. side hustle. Became my main hustle. I'm actually national director over there, uh, and also an investor. So it's, uh, you know that, that's so you, been taking up a lot of my time. You basically invested in like a whole bunch of like different businesses. You got the music, you got the yes. engineering, you got Beast Mobile, and a whole bunch Mer- of things. The Gorilla like, Pino Strike March. You the, know, you know. I yeah. gotta ask you, man. Like, uh, are you are you from here or were you born in the Philippines? Nah, I'm just born in Bay Area, man. Born in Bay Area, Santa Clara, yeah. super Bay Area, by the way. Straight up. But like, you, you know what's crazy is that. You know, a, a lot of us who are first born, first generation over here, a lot yeah. of our parents tend to push like the doctor, lawyer thing on us. But you, in a sense, have just become an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something very yeah. unprecedented to the Filipino culture. Which I feel, man, there's a lot of us out here, and I'm still trying to educate myself about other Filipino entrepreneurs. But I, I feel like that's my whole thing. I always tell people, man, we need more Filipino role models right now. Yeah. Like, we always say, oh, we should be this, or we are, we have the capability to do this. But it's like... But what is the platform? Like, who is really helping us learn or educate us to who these, to who to look out for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, my bad to go off topic, but like, that's just something I be preaching, man. It's like, man, these pl- some of these big platforms and stuff like that, like, I swear we don't have anywhere to, like, where do you get your, how do you get your education on what's the next Filipino uh, high school uh, sports uh, Honestly, I, athlete I mean, or, or or in college recruit or yeah. or, or entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It ain't really spoken of even within our circles. And yeah. the biggest platforms, let's just say like a TFC, right? Where like that's Filipino news. They don't really tap in like that, you know what I'm saying? Or even the big events, like they'll have like these, uh, like you've seen the celebrity basketball games and yeah. stuff like that, which is dope. I like how they do that, but every year they use the same people. To come slide through, mm. they don't educate. It's and it's and a lot of the same people they use is all club people. Like, how is that teaching our new generation or, or inspiring them 
without that's the biggest platform for them to see something. Are you, are, are you talking about the uh, Filipino game that just happened at Staples? To be fair, I was I personally was just invited to that, and I you know I played yeah. alongside like Pilo, E Man, E Rock, yeah. and all them. And you know what was cool was that like me being invited to there as like a first year, I was like wow, like I didn't realize that there were so many prominent Filipinos. So I'll put you in on. The they, they put, put you me on. on. That's dope. But That's you know, dope. but what's crazy is that like I will agree with you to the fact that it's like we do exist. We just don't know that we exist. It's like no, there's no outlet. It's hard. It's like we're we're not we're not having these topics every day, mm-hmm. you know. And I felt like I would love to see hella more Filipino role models. You know, I don't I don't been blessed from the beginning of my career to seeing all the like on the on the music side. But now I want to learn like how can we get? I want to see. I swear to God, pare. I want to see an NFL pare. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? NBA pare. I want to see this uh, next Fortune 500 successful Gary V motherfucking party. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, but we just are only up to here and we're not ever up here. Yeah. And and the actors and actresses, like, we don't have even no movies. Yeah. What not the fuck? The we have the debut. <laughs> and we laugh at that because, you know, of course, everyone's seen it and it's like, a, it's our own. Yeah. It's really our, our shit. Our only thing we really have. Body. Uh-huh. We, didn't, we don't even have no real classics. That's the only shit we could really speak on. Yeah. You know, so it just, I, it's 2020 coming up. I would love to see that shit all change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people can't even name like five Filipino actors. Mm, Dante Bosco, his of brother. Course. All of uh, them. <laughs> uh, Inigo Pasquale's dad. There you go. You know, that's only three. See? And then there's but like, I mean, there's, all the mix, there's all the mixed people. Yeah. I, I can't even name them. I just, it just sucks. But you I know, can't. I, I'm guilty too. But you know, something that, I, <laughs> something that I will tell you though, going back to like, we need more role models. I, I remember this clearly, bro. I think it was like Pistahan of like 2008, 2009, right? And I had seen you perform. Oh, sweet. And you don't remember this shit, but I remember going up to you and I was like, hey, bro, like, I would love if I could take a photo with you. And yeah. then you ended up taking a photo with me. You were hella hyphy and shit. And oh, I was cool. like, you know, <laughs> I was like, oh, no, shit. No, 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 oh, no, no. Shit. You, no, no, no. It was fire, bro. It was fire. Hell yeah, brother. Hell you know yeah, what I mean? Fire. And like, you know, growing up, I will agree, the, the only like Filipino role model that I was looking at was really either Gabe Bondock or you. Solid, man. And and to me, it was just like, you brought so much energy to the Filipino community. Like, you know, I, at one point, I was calling all Filipinos Gorilla Pinos. Nice. And I, you know what I mean? Yeah, we I got, was just like... I love that. I love hearing shit like that. And even like the pares. Like, saying pare. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I hang out with a diverse group. You know what I'm saying? Black, white, Mexican, uh, Middle Eastern, we, we, all the Asians and... I say body so much that I got all them screaming that shit. Shit, you had you Burner know? saying it too. All, all these motherfuckers, <laughs> they all know body through me. And it's just like, I feel like that's our culture. We're traditional. I feel like, shit, I'm going to talk to you how I talk to my bodies. I'm not going to hold back and be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nigga, what's happening? You know, I'm like, I say I talk all the same regular shit, but I was like, fuck that shit. I'm a body. I'm going to call everybody around mm. me a body. You know what I mean? That's why I made my merch and the teach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all my on all my hats, it says "homie, brother, compadre," so they understand. Like, oh, what that's means. where the origin of body comes from. Yeah, that's beautiful, bro. And you know, to me, like you, you really put on for the Filipinos, like 100. percent I think in like even in like your songs in Lapu Lapu, you're talking in Tagalog, and I'm just like, I don't hear rappers like do the. My way. Hey. You know what I mean? I don't hear rappers <laughs> yeah. like kind of do that anymore. I mean, Bamboo does the shit for show. I love Ruby, Bamboo. Ruby Ibarra does it love for Ruby. show. Yes. But it's like the more and more we do these things, the more I feel like we're gonna get together as a community. Totally. But why, from your perspective, why do you think we haven't had like the one yet? Like, I don't think it's the one. Like I'm saying, is we need the outlet. We need, we need, we need, we need it just to be everywhere, and it's just got to be the, it's got to be the chismes. When I say chismes, y'all don't understand. It's like that's like gossip, <laughs> Filipino Tagalog, like chismes. Yes. But the chismes they always talk about it. It doesn't really hit to where it's successful shit. You know what I'm talking about? And then, like I said, the, like those platforms, like I love, I, I love seeing these big, like the celebrity basketball game. That's so tight. But then it's like I see the same people. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Why, why can't we put on some new people? Like, or can we find some who's a college athlete coming up? Or you know what I'm saying? Mm. A successful entrepreneur. I would love to be educated through those things. Like, I feel like in those situations, they don't educate those. That's the biggest. The only reason I'm using that as an example because that to me is like the biggest platform yeah. of where like, oh damn, I'm going to a Laker Clipper game. Let's see what Filipinos I'm going to see, and it's like the same shit all the time. 
man, let's let's put some of the youth in there. Let's put some of these young entrepreneurs in there or people successful like doing their clothing brands or something that will inspire yeah. other Filipinos to be like, then they could have your share your your feeling like, man, I was there and then I saw P Lo and I saw E Rock and mm-hmm. Blase Blah. And it would just be, I think that could help spread at least a little by little to get it out there more. Cause yeah. we're we're filling. We're not in PI Philippines. We're we're filling. And, it, and it's, <laughs> it's a big, it's a big separation. Yeah. I'm not I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Like I go P I'm nothing like those Phil, you know what I'm saying? I'm we are we are we are different, but there's no reason why we can't have that bridge at all try to somehow always tap in and teach okay, well you got what you got going in the Philippines. Oh, I think that's hot. That's sick. Okay, cool. Well, look what we got going over here. And then at least getting the awareness out more. And it doesn't matter if we're just in a Filipino-based environment. See, we always wait for it like a pastahan or something like that. Do it every day, pare. Let's go. You feel me? Sheesh. Pare. You, you know what I'm every saying? Every fucking day. I talk like this to my niggas <laughs> all the time. And I'm teaching like, wow. they're like, why? What's, you know what I'm saying? And like, I think stuff like this will help. Just get us out there because we are talented. We is the rawest at DJing and graffiti <laughs> and, and when it comes to fashion and behind Dancing, the scenes. everything, bro. We raw as fuck. But it's like it took the Jabberwockies to wear a mask for them to be. Damn. What if they did not wear the mask? Uh. Oh my mama and I love them and I those are my family and they but they was the illest for doing that because they un, they know. Yeah. If we were to show our bare brown Filipino face, they probably like okay they tight. Yeah, but doing all that mystery, like who's the man behind the mask type stuff, made them the Jabberwockies icon that they are today. You know what I'm saying? Wow, that it's insane because I think even to that testament, maybe maybe in some cases, a lot of us feel like we can't be ourselves to the public and yet. Bingo, and that's what sucks about the Phil M. Like cats growing up is like, body. Just do you like stop trying to emulate mirror whatever trying to you know what I'm saying dick ride whatever that be you mm-hmm. I love that shit be yourself and I swear to God it'll be it'll be natural organic and that maybe the shit will just you know what I'm saying yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll, it'll, the up. world will happen how I've envisioned it body but right now <laughs> it's like we don't have enough man and I love I love seeing the success it is we are trending a little bit more nowadays but it ain't enough yeah it's not enough and I think. I think within the past two years, 88 Rising has done a really good job at this and, you know, putting on for Asian culture. <laughs> yes. And I, I think within the past two years, too, I've seen people like Sweetie or also Guap Dad yes. 4000. Yes. They've also come out. I and also it. her, too. Yes. They've all come out and said, yeah, you know, I'm either. Proud I, Filipino. I'm proud Raised Filipino. Filipino. Talking about the tradition. See, I love seeing that shit because then and now it's giving you the awareness to not just a Pastahan Filipino festival yeah. uh, crowd, <laughs> which we know it already. You don't it need exists. to preach to us. It's been going around for like over a decade now. <laughs> how do we get it to where it's just from this small circle to the world? Like, how do we get Pastahan to be every day? Man, bro. I've never seen it yet, Pare. I've seen... Close to it, maybe like with when Apple the app was pushing hard and was mm-hmm. I go uh, back then Apple was showing me a lot of love and he tried to sign me. Um, it, it, I was working with him, Roscoe Molly, and um, Roscoe, Roscoe Molly. Hey, ooh, Roscoe Molly. <laughs> Shout out to Roscoe, man. I got mad love Shout for you, buddy. Live it up. That's it up. a that's a motherfucker. If he was right now, you know what I'm saying. He's doing this little thing right now, sitting down. But like if he, how he was moving, doing this entrepreneurship. That's the shit that I be loving. He yeah. had his shoe. He had, you know what I'm saying? He was getting all the features. I love that shit, bro. I love that so shit. Going, going back to like Apple D app, man, like, uh, did he ever eventually sign you or no? So, no, nah, we we was very close. We was very close to it. Uh, man, he, if it weren't for Apple, I would, first time in the Philippines, Apple D app. My, oh, wow. With fucking, my concert was with Apple D app and Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. First time in the P.I. Pate. Yo, they came up on that bruh. concert, bro. So, that, that's lit. I'll tell the story real quick. My first time ever, Philippine Airlines, juice like a motherfucker. I'm get, you, you know how they have duty-free? Yeah. So I don't know what the fuck this is. It's like, what's this? You buy bottles? <laughs> They're like, yeah, Pate, you just buy bottle, you know, before you land so you can have souvenirs. Like, shit. Oh, they got Remy? I didn't have no Hennessy. So I'm over here. I'm drunk as fuck, Pate, pounding this Remy. <laughs> it's so, bro. <laughs> in the airport and shit. In the plane. 
And while we're oh, sitting God. down, I don't know what's going on. Mind that I'm already drunk because they, they they feed you drinks. You and know, that's I'm a 16-hour flight, bro. So, yeah, I'm, I'm perking, right? I'm all, I'm over here slizzard. And we land, and it was the most rock star shit ever about it. it had, also, I got to shout out my Uncle Dell. My Uncle Dell has got tapped in out there. So mm-hmm. he knew some of the whatever, the custom shit. But they straight, Mr. Nump, Mr. Nump. Like, I'm talking about, like, stopping the whole plane once we land. Where's Mr. Nump? Mr. Nump. I'm like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Hold the bottle up. Straight, grab me off the plane. Bypass. I'm I'm not waiting in no lines. Straight into the fucking uh the little twelve seater van. I'm like, what about my luggage? Don't worry, Padre. We we deliver. We deliver it to the hotel. We, we got you. <laughs> yeah, we got you, bro. I feel like some straight like the president, bro. For real, bro. Oh, man. Oh man. shit. But I got hella stories about the PI man. I love the PI man. Hella fun out there. What'd you I love- say is the craziest story that you did in the PI? Uh, I'm gonna keep it PG. Yeah, P- the, the PG uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my fathers are. Hello, my fathers are laughing bro, right now. Cause we, cause we know how crazy the Philippines can really be, bro. Say yeah, if you want to have a hell of a good time and you wilding, you could go PI, man, and enjoy yourself. Where but you want to go, Barakay? All that, bro. All Wait. that. But nah, real talk, man. Fucking just performing at that concert for the first time in uh, in PI with Apple, and then so I just did my set. Um, everything I love. I'm hella sweaty. I'm I'm standing by the DJ. It was DJ Rocky Rock, and I'm just looking, and so. All of a sudden, you hear this music that boom, da 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 da, boom, da right, da 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 da, da boom, 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 boom. And while that happens, <laughs> so mind that. So here's the DJ right here, right here's the DJ right here. So fucking, then somebody starts coming out of the fucking ground of the stage, right, and then rising up, rising up, and it's fucking Manny Pacquiao, <laughs> and this motherfucker <laughs> turns around, does a fucking. And then it goes boom, da 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 da, boom, da 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 da, da ocho, ocho. Oh my god! And it was Manny singing all these fucking songs that like wow. I used to see on Wow Wow Wee, which was like, you know, what the hell? Wow Wow Wee. Yeah. Bro. Oh wow. So that was like epic to me, it. And then and then after our concert, Manny's just like, come on, we go, we walk through my bar. So we're deep, we're hunted deep. We just all all the whatever, like the you Oprah. You Manny Apple D, I've got drunk. Oh, I was fucked up, man. I had, man, I was drunk, man. I was off that. What is it? What's the uh, Tanduai? Uh, ooh, uh, the bar? Tanduai. Tanduai no, no, no. rum. Drinking that shit straight up. Like, drinking out there is crazy, bro. You could buy, I was buying bottles of vodka for like $1.50. And I'm cheap. and I'm knocking it down to the face, bro. Like, because, you know, I'm getting used to drinking that shit. It yeah. Was, but, you know, Philippines, this is great to experience. Being Filipino, the culture, really my favorite thing is to go back home. I'm from a longer post, so like seeing my family's family and all them and hearing their stories of them like hearing about me and like and just tapping in, them teaching me of like how, where my mom went to school and wow, yeah, man. So yeah, it, I, I love, love seeing that because it's like, now you know where you're really from. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And it's like, then it could get deeper. Now you know, like, this is where Lapu Lapu was. And if for cats don't know, Lapu Lapu was our first hero. Like, growing up, did you did you kind of hear? I actually, I actually learned a little bit about Lapu Lapu. So basically, when uh, the Spaniards came through, or uh, when Magellan came through, for the right? first time. Lapu Lapu and, like, his people came through and basically murdered him within, like, two weeks or something like that. Within they, Right when they came through, they slid through, and they, they not, didn't just kill him. They chopped off Magellan's head. You know what I'm talking about? Real Gorilla Pino <laughs> shit. So here's a movie, y'all, I've been wanting to do. Like Apocalypto, I want a Lapu Lapu movie. Straight up. Mm. That, And I'm actually working on something like that low key, just to like pitch to these people with, with money that would be interested because I feel that that storyline right there is like Magellan sailing up, trying to, oh, we're going to conquer the Philippines. All yeah. these Spaniards and Lapu Lapu in the cut. like, And, you know, we didn't look, he didn't look like nothing like how we look, mm-hmm. like maybe darker than me. With a whole we, ass beard. Yeah, oh, yeah, bro, yeah. all that. We was, we super black. You feel me? On everything. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. We, Filipinos, super black. Like the original. We're, we're dark as shit. Uh, I think because what happened. The Igorots. Was, you know yeah, what I'm the, talking about? The Negritos has actually like moved over to the Philippines. That's the first, and, like, and I heard that's like all the first human. Humans. I mean, I, we could go, we wow. could dig deep. But I, I don't, I, hey, don't quote me on that. But I know we, we <laughs> check the history yeah. books, man. So Lapu Lapu seen Magellan slice his head off, and they kept it, right? And they kept telling him, man, we'll give you all this money, gold, whatever. And he was so proud, and 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 and, and, di- and be- what he believed in was like, nah, I ain't giving you the head back. That's my trophy. Not all the money in the world can't 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 even uh, amount to to this right here. This is mine. Yeah. And that, that's why I named my album Lapu Lapu because Lapu Lapu believed in some, and he did not fucking switch it up for nothing. Mm. And then also the story of him being the first hero. And I felt like if he were a rapper, he would be hyphy. 
Yeah. And I feel like I'm I'm Lapu Lapu then. I mean, I'm, he was ready to turn up and, you know, slice the head off and shit. Yeah, real apocalypto shit, buddy. So I feel like if I want to drop that movie with Lapu Lapu story or just storyline around it, and then even fast forward into it and involve why they created the cult, you know, the 45 caliber yeah. to take out with the Spanish uh, uh, American army where they had to create that higher caliber because when they were, when they was hmm. going after the Muslim soldiers, the Filipino, the Filipinos that they was trying to attack, that they would shoot them with the lower caliber and they couldn't take them out. They were still stabbing them. They would uh. shoot them and they would still be choke, poking them and then stabbing them. So and and they would also I learned from one of the bodies that they were tying rope around their body so tight that there'd be no blood flow and and it'd be like a bulletproof damn near armor on them. So they would still get shot, but they they stabbed and cut them. So they were like, "Fuck, what do we do to take these Filipinos out?" Let's let's invent this higher caliber forty five. So the reason why they invented the forty five caliber body was to take out our people in that war. Deep. So I want to have, I'm having all that shit, the imagery and all that shit. I'm going to have little, in my music video for La Pula, I'm going to have little kids holding 45s, pointing at the camera. Because that's history. That's deep shit that people don't really know that like, we went through a lot of shit. Our, our ancestors to get, in, in, you know what I'm saying? Back then. It's deep. See you over here. Bro, these I'm are the talks I have all. I'm, these I'm are the talks I have like, all the time in my bodies, bro. It's 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 dope. Filipino history should be taught in, in everywhere, not just to us. I think everyone needs to learn this shit because it's some deep shit. But it's like I feel like we definitely need a movie like that because we history oh. history gets lost so quickly. Imagine you know? how many people because, will be inspired off of that, and not just Filipinos, just the world. Yeah. Like, wow, that's some dope history, right? Because I'm saying, like, growing up, you know, go, going to school in like San Francisco and whatnot, they just told us Magellan was like the first person to travel all across the world. They never told us how he died. They well, never told us. By it, Lapu you know Lapu I mean? chopped his head off. Like, like all that history is lost, and I feel like if you go to the person next door or even just like a typical Filipino next yeah. door like they don't even know this shit I didn't know this shit I knew of Lapu Lapu growing up we, I always knew he was just like a sav you know through all my bodies and stuff we would always talk about that stuff but like like now like I'm saying I got kids and I'm I'm, t- I'm trying to let lace their boots like no Lapu Lapu they, they say it they don't know what they talking about but they like yeah Lapu Lapu daddy you know what I'm saying they know that that's like that gorilla pino savage yeah you feel me that's but. why even even in the title track for the uh, album, right? Mm-hmm. If you really listen to it, like I'm trying to lace their boots, I'm trying to yeah, put yeah. a little game like, in there. Like you're not saying it so abruptly, but yeah. then you're saying it enough to where if you know about Lapu Lapu, at least you have you'll an be idea. Proud. But you'll then for somebody who doesn't know, it's just like, wait, who exactly? What is he talking about? Yeah, who, and then you'll exactly Google it. That's, that's my yeah, goal, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, they, yeah. There's a lot of we got a lot of Filipino mm-hmm. history that I felt like is is, is monumental to the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, I heard another thing, and I'm pre- I'm pretty sure it's like hundred percent. But um, you know the barongs. You know why we wear the barongs, right? The see through. I, I don't know. So the see through shirts. So uh, we used to be slaves. You know during that whole time mm-hmm. we're getting conquered, and so we would um we would stab our the slave owners. You know because we're sick with the knives and shit. And we, yeah. When they try to do it, they would, would stab. So I uh, I heard that they 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 invented the barong so they could make sure there's no we weren't hiding anything in our waist. And it would be see through, and making sure that we weren't do, doing that to the slave owners, so they would make the them wear barongs. So then, why do we continue to wear barongs if that's what that's, the slave owner gave us? Who knows, bro? You know what I'm wow. saying? Wow, yeah, that's a piece of history. But that's a piece of history I heard. I'm not, I ain't, I ain't, you know I mean, what I'm saying? Make, fact che- I didn't fact check it, but when I it was from a validated person, so I'm like, bro, that that sounds deep, man. You yeah, know what that, I mean? That should definitely make sense. But there's so much history involved, man. We could talk for hours. Like I'm telling you, about it, this is stuff I talk about all the time, and it's just like. Fuck it, man. Why don't I just tell the world about this shit? Because this, I'm telling you, if we were to drop a movie like this, bruh, <laughs> the shit would be fucking out of here. Like, number one top charting in the Philippines. I mean, shit. If y'all need me to play Lapu Lapu, I'll get on my karate body diet, man. <laughs> and then we'll have the rock. We could have the rock do the stunt double shit. <laughs> so, you know what I do appreciate about Lapu Lapu, though? Uh, you do, you've put on people like Bamboo on there. Yeah. And you also put on my boy Russ Cousin. Russ, yes, 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 yes. You know what I mean? And to me, like that's grabbing uh, two two people like of Filipino culture. I like, teach, into, man. You know what I mean? I and, teach, and, and, man. And it's like educating the rest of the people. Like, yo, like it's not only me. Like, we got other people I'll, who exist too. Dude, body. So from the beginning of my career, bro, if you go dig all the way back to my first album, The Nump Yard, yeah, uh, right. I had a song in there called F O B. We ain't fresh off the boat. We fresh off your bitch. bitch. Come on, <laughs> with fucking some of the with my gorilla pinos on there, man. You feel me? Yeah. I, I had to, uh, had from my, my my boy Doja from the Gators, D.L. the Arson, and my other body was I can't think of it right now. And it's just like I always felt like 
bro, like, why don't we all just? If I, I'm not, I'm not trying to do this to the neck. I've never been like that. You know what I'm saying? I just like being me, yeah. doing me, and, and I love seeing the bodies come together. So fast forward a couple projects after that, I did the Gorilla Pino comp. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Where I just basically took at that time. I was always in a lab with E40 because I was his studio engineer for Castel. No, I'm a sound engineer. I got a gold record for engineering my ghetto report card with the I'm tell me when to go, snap your fingers, like yeah, yeah body. Oh like, shit. Body. I, so, bro, I went to school for this shit. That's one thing you talking about. Oh, you know, family, uh, why don't you go to school, be a nurse, all this shit? I don't give a fuck about that shit. I, <laughs> I went, I found my passion at junior college, t- learning how to make beats in the MIDI class. And that shit, that motherfucking shit took me to a whole nother level where like yeah. I dropped all my classes. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know my mom's was pissed, but she see me falling. In, it, I always wanted to be a DJ, bro. You feel me? I like that was my shit from like 15, 16 up. So I was always around music shit. And then, once I started going to the to, to the classes, it took it to a whole new level. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. prior to that, I was already on tour. People don't know, man. Before me even a sound engineer, I was on the street team with Def Jam because of my big cousin, and I was on tour for the Hard Knock Life tour, doing all the street team shit. Oh, climbing wow. the climbing up the telephone poles. It's called sniping, sniping all the poster boards, handing out all the CDs. Just we, there was budgets back then. There wasn't doing no there the was promo. no social media shit. It was real grassroots street team. Marketing shit, and that's what I did. I was the motherfucker that rolled up all the posters, handed you a poster when you left the concert. I think one sh- one show of the tour, I had to wear the Red Man mascot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I was like, "Fuck it, I'll do it." <laughs> yeah, fuck it, fuck it. <laughs> but you're getting paid right now. That so fuck whole it. It, that educated me on the whole grassroots marketing techniques of what what artists were doing at that time, especially on a major, and it always stuck in my head. That's why you see how I campaign now. I campaigned it like a strict, like 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 a presidential campaign, mm-hmm. trying to win the election. You feel me? I'm Trump. I'm <laughs> Trump. You feel me? So yeah, man. But yeah, I, I but but being a sound engineer was a huge part of, of a key to my success in the music industry because so say you're in a session with a, with the artist, right? I was okay. I was an engineer and I'm doing my music at the time and I'm recording all the shit and at the time I would be like, oh, see how you have all the shit here? I would put like my flyers everywhere. Like mix, mm. mix everywhere. So say we're like two, three hours in, where I'm recording, I'm doing something for Rick Rock, you know what I'm saying? His group, the Federation, and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, you you hey bro, you rap? And I'm, then we building that connection. Gotcha. Like, oh, you know, I try to do my thing, I'm trying to get it in. And then after the session, hey, what's up, bro? Can I play you some shit? Yeah. And then I'm talking to Rick Rock, Messi Marv, all these fools, and they're like, really, Messi Marv is the first motherfucker to call me nump. Cause my rap name was really Dust Purvulous. And the Dust album, purvulous. Dust Purvulous, I was straight <laughs> drunk on the cover, <laughs> Dust Perv, like this on the cover, man. And the album was called Nump the Album, because the, the word Nump we made up as like, instead of bump, that shit Nump. Like, you know, but that shit wow. be, we don't say that, for, you hella ancient if you say bumping right now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we used to say bump, all that bump. That shit bump. That shit bumping, man. Now the bump. shit slap. Slap, blap, you feel me? But so yeah, we was drunk one time. We came with Nump, and my shit was called Nump the Album, and I made it so big on the artwork. I'll show you later. It looks like my name is Nump. It says Nump the Album, hella big. So motherfucker, Messy Bar be like, "Hey Nump, hey Nump, you list." Like he knew what's up, but he just he just flipped that shit. Yeah. And next thing you know, that's hey, how yeah, the, bro. I'm gonna run with that shit. Hey, Forty Water always told me, man, you, people give you your name. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I just ran with it, bro. But yeah, sound engineering was a major key, bro. Like being behind the behind the board and and then knowing how to do my own shit. I don't have to rely on nobody. Yeah, you can just do the shit by yourself. Look at here, you have your own shit cracking right here. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you don't have to go rely Keep on. Keep hundred percent, you dig? Keep it hundred percent and uh, organic, <laughs> and you don't have to fucking wait on the next man to do what you exactly. want. Your your passion. Exactly. So yeah, man. I do gotta ask you since you know you having sessions with a uh, Rick Rock, right? Oh yeah. Is that what kind of led to I got grapes because so that got. Sh- that got the federation on there. Bingo. So check this out. So the, the 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 owner of the studio, bro, was so cool with me, man. Like I was a house engineer running that studio for 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 hella long, and um, it came to a relationship. Where it was like, hey, no, I'm gonna go out on vacation, so um, I'm gonna close the studio down. Nah, Mike, Michael Denton, Mike, let leave it open, and I'll I'll work all your sessions. But when when I'm done, can I stay and work on my own shit? Mm. Fucking numb, go ahead. So, bro, one weekend I had a whole weekend. Mike was gone. I called the Federation up, Stress and Dooney. I had my brother D1 that produced the beat. We just ran through beats. Stress heard the beat first. It was like, hold on, stop. Loop that part. No, do this shit. And we just started getting crazy with it. Yeah. And then a lot of that shit, if you listen deep, we're doing weird shit with our voice. And it's just real percussion, real heavy drum. 
You know what I'm talking about? Wow. If you listen, wait. So the beat, the beat was made off vocals? No, 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 no. Oh, it okay, was already. Okay. Just, it was just we took a drum loop, but there was other parts and synths and all this shit. We just took the drums and looped got the drums you, the whole you, time. You, and then those hella, hella little shit you might hear. And I just we just I tweaked it out with some reverb shit. And then so when we did the hook, it was that stress was in there. I got gripes, and how he said it sound dead ass like E40. Yeah. The whole time. So, body, we took that that night. E Rock. Was DJing at fucking the Oakland uh, Hotel. Uh, shit, I can't think of the name, but it was at the hotel where it was a club. And bro, I swear to God, by it, this is one of the moments where like we broke the record. Like he played that, that record, night. and everyone was like, the whole it was like a movie, bro. Like everyone's like, I got grabs <laughs> to where like, hold on, we running that shit back. Like shit wow. you don't see like in person, where it was like, you feel me? So Cl- E Rock broke the record at Club Ibiza. That's where we was at, Damn. and it was so funny, buddy. We was hammered right, and E Rock was like, give me this shit. I'm keeping this. So he took it, and in my head the whole night, I was on one too, bro. I popped a couple pills. I was drunk, and I'm thinking in my head, like, before all my pills kicked in, I was like, dude, fuck this shit. E-Rock can't have this shit, right? Yeah. It's not even done yet. So I went in his backpack and took that shit, the CD. This has CDs. <laughs> Back when we had CDs. <laughs> no. Because he thought he had it. And yeah. so he's in the car, and he's like, nope, I got your record. I'm about to break it. I'm like, what record? And he's looking in his backpack. Oh, I'm like, motherfucker, you ain't having this shit. And for the longest, fools were trying to get that record off me, bro. Yeah. For real. Like, oh, let me put it on my comp. I'll put you on. And I was I was tucking onto it like, nah, this is my baby. Yeah. This is it. And I waited. You knew. We you knew. Did, well, I seen the outcome. You feel me? So fast forward, like, we kept, you know, so this is before E-40 was on it. And like I said, I was E40 sound engineer, and one of them nights, it was like, we're probably done by 7 in the morning. This is like, we start at like 5 p.m., be done by 7 a.m. Yeah. He perking. This is when he was drinking the big jugs of Rossi at the time before he had his own shit. You feel me? And he perking, and I'm like, 40, hey, before I leave, I got this song I did with Stress. Can I just knock it out real quick, get you on the hook? Oh, you line it up. No, it's, it's solid. It's solid. It's solid. Line. You know, he's standing up. Trying, you know, he perking <laughs> just like shit. Fucking just done. Yeah, just line it up. Yeah. So we pl- I play it, and you hear, who got it? I got gripes. And I was like, just say that part. And he's he drunk, right? He listened. He's like, oh, did I already do it? Did I already? <laughs> he, said, he said, did I already? He just sounded so much already like him, It's bro. like it was already on here. I yeah. thought I did it already. And um, we were like, nah, bro, bro, bro. Nah. We was just making it sound like you, but just just do it. So I had- That's I rec- the demo, 40. Right? That's the demo. So all his little shit, his ooze and all that shit, I, I cut all that shit up. So if you listen to Grapes, I, you'll hear him just all through that. Ooh. Just as part of the fucking drums. I love it. But I that's just the little it. shit there that's like, Pare, come on. Put E40 it. all over this shit. So wow. once that was done, and I'm learning, a, I'm, I'm soaking up so much game from E40 where I'm like, I was engineering his radio show. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, uh, when he, he was had, it on KML? Yeah, on KML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the one engineering all that shit. So at that, at that time, cool, Grapes is like popping and shit. And I will sneak in, like when I'm emailing the drops, I'm sneaking in my songs. To send to the radio, came me like, oh, by the way, bro, did you hear? Now they fucking with me. Oh, yeah, no, I'll play this shit. Yeah. We'll put you on. So shit like that is like, you can't just make the music. You also got to know how to campaign and be seen, and you got to just don't take your foot off their neck. Like, when Grapes came out, E-40 had his Club the Ambassadors Lounge, and I'm going with him every night he go, every Friday night mm-hmm. he go, I'm with E-40, right? So to a point where, like, B- DJ Big Von is like... Oh, no, what's happening? Okay, this your record? Cool to like fast forward a couple months later. Now I walk in the club and it, it, Grapes just comes on. Without, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So that's just the whole part of success is where you just got to keep going and going and going. Set set your goal and then reach higher than your goal. Well, what I appreciate about you the most about, you know, just the creation of I Got Grapes and, you know, just you Crazy, putting bro. yourself forward as an artist too. It's like you're not making yourself, you're not putting your artistry to somebody's neck. You know no, what I mean? Like no. you came I'm not in, trying to sound like nobody but me, for well, real. Well, at the same time, yeah. too, like you came in, you knew like, all right, I'm a sound engineer right now, yes. so I'm just going to do my job as a sound engineer. Yeah. And then you you know, you know, piqued uh, Rick Rock's curiosity, like, oh, you're an artist, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah here's yeah, my yeah. shit. Yes. Or even like, you know, you know, sending 40s records to KML. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm just going to slide my shit in, but I'm not going to tell anybody. No. The shit's just going to be in Make there. it flow organic. Don't force Ex- feed it. If yes. it happens, it's like... <laughs> Closed mouth don't get fed, man. You feel me? Lazy hustler don't get bread. That was a, an, another famous word from E40 that I learned. So it was like, I was, I'm was i never scary to like, I live a life body of like no regrets. I hate having regrets. That's beautiful. I hate that feeling. The feeling of having regret is the worst shit ever. And I never have regrets. If I, if I probably almost feel like I have one, I'll go back and do whatever the fuck I was regretting to do. God damn. Just to feel it by that. Because then, how will you know if you don't go? Yeah. Period. Wow. 
But also, shout out to my success coach. I have a success coach, Romeo Marquez Jr. I want to shed some light on him. Follow him. He's dope, bro. And he put me on shit like that. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to be able to be on this here to understand up here. So, like, Cass, well, what's like, his name, Romeo? Romeo Marquez Jr., hella Romeo Filipino. Romeo Marquez Jr. <laughs> shit, I got to write that down. And he actually, uh, he do, so he an actor. He a little actor. Okay, baby. so that's that's four. Yeah, yeah that's the four. But he one. ain't really up there like that. But like he do, <laughs> he do his thing. The reason why I say that though was I always wanted to do improv, and he he talked me into taking an improv class. But I didn't want to do it at first because it was like at the at this like you know a local like a local community center school, and it was hella mm. old ladies there. I felt hella weird. Yeah. And he straight up told me, he's like, bro, how will you know if you don't go? That's true. I mean, if you could do it in front of like some old ladies, then it's just like, fuck it. I just felt hella weird about yeah. it. But I'm thinking, but he put it in my head like, so what? Try it. Just do it. Yeah. And you know, and I love that. And that helped me through all my life's lessons because now that's what I tell my kids. Like, don't ever hold nothing back. Do, do it. Try it. You don't fuck with it. Then fuck it. Yeah. At least you know. <laughs> like, at least you at know. At least you fucking at least know. You know, man. Hell Man, yeah. I I love the conversation right now. Let, let, let's do like a little switch. I remember okay, back in the please. day, right? If you go into my room in Daly City, ah. you will see a poster of your uh, the Nump Yard. No, not the Nump Yard. Which the one? the cartoon that you had. Wow, the Nut Shack. The Nut Shack. <laughs> the Nut Shack. Nut Shack was crazy. So, uh, like, dude, so Nut Shack has a cult following right now. They're like, on, it's still going on. It's not, but it's oh, like but... they want it. They want it bad. It's like this group of people that it's pretty deep. If I tweet right now, hey, where's all my Nut Shack fans? Like, you get a, <laughs> I'll get a couple hundred just, and they're all like anime. Uh, drawing, uh, yeah, like it, like it was you, really good for the time. Man. I'm just saying the, the the following. It's like I don't know these people if they're even real people. It's just like their faces are drawing. Oh, got you. It got just you. it trips me out. But they're really diehard Nut Shack fans. It's funny that you tapped in with that, and they want it bad. I had how, um. How did the creation of the Nut Shack? I, I had nothing to do with it, by the way. It was it was uh, the channel ABS CBM Mix. They they had it already ready set go. They just tapped in with me to do the intro. Uh-huh. Period. They just tapped in with me the intro, and and I did it, and we documented the whole shit. I did one episode with them, but just because I'm on the intro song, I'm involved with every episode. Yeah, everybody thinks you're you're associated with the whole yeah, damn thing. Yeah, it, it, I, yeah, it's crazy, bro. The check was deep, bro. Like no check was deep. That was man. cool, man. I wish they. I hope they could bring it back. I ain't really talked to the crew. This is during uh, an era of Nump where I was really wilding on my. Uh, <laughs> Over the hyphy movement shit type shit, and I was doing some yeah. some some some, some fucking, wild shit. Oh man, bro, some hyphy shit. I was I was super out of pocket, man. I think I've apologized maybe a hundred times to these guys, but man, if we could bring it back together and chop it up, we could probably make some people hey, real man, excited, man. I would love to see it, man. Cause you know what I mean. You, you take the nut shack and then you you just like amp it up with the, the with the animations they have today. It's like boom, you have a whole new show. Hey, I'll just tap in with some, you know we got, we can make it happen, man. It's like shit. I'll go hit a Fiverr. <laughs> Fiverr. Yeah, somebody on Fiverr could definitely do the shit. How much you need it for? Five bucks? Man, Ten bucks? Man. Yeah, you good to go. Yeah, Nutshack was crazy, bro. But yeah, they got a cool following right now, man. Every time I talk about the Nutshack, like it's, people still fuck with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listening to your album, uh, Lapu Lapu. It's funny because you actually had a Gary V feature on there, yeah. but then, but then you used a Gary V, yeah. you know, like something. Bay shit. Of, That's Bay Area shit yeah. right there, man. We we take something in and, <laughs> and put them on the song, and, the and then, then it's featuring that person. Yeah, that's some Bay Area shit right there, man. Right? You know, so, just took it, man. Like I'm a Gary V fan. Me too. Be, be, from even before to where he's viral. Like I got I got on him when he was like, like just just kind of like getting his buzz, like not even a meal ticket of followers. He was just still, you know, just being just him. talking his shit, and. Like I, I was diehard Gary V. Listen every day. Now I just gotta, I balance it out. I listen to it every when I can because I, you know, you could, can't. He ain't, he ain't preaching nothing new. At the end of the day, he's telling us shit we already know. It's just we understand now. You understand it because he's saying it maybe in another type, of, another type of life. I mean, he'll show videos where he said the shit ten years ago. Period. And I right. love it. And I love it. And and he's keeping it real. It's just basically saying shit. What we talking about? Just do it. If you feel something, do it. You don't fuck with it. Like he's that kind of mentality. That's why I fuck with him. And it's all about work ethic. It's all about shooting for whatever your goals are. If you all want to be up here, like his goals is to buy the Jets. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm on the same shit now. Like my goals switched up, and I want to own a hundred stores. You know what I'm saying? The Beast Mobiles. I want to see that shit everywhere. You know yeah. what I mean? But you know, I want to be in a movie. I want to be like I want to do have the lap like I and I say these things all the time because I know if you keep saying this shit, it's gonna happen. It'll, it'll pop off. Yeah, it'll pop off. 
I feel like low key, you you could end up being like the Filipino Gary Vee. I would love to. I just see, I just don't want to follow no structure. But I be do I do my morning motivations and shit, and I just talk my shit. I just talk. I tell stories like this, and I know like, oh shit, that helped me when I did this. So maybe you should try that. Yeah. If not, fuck it. Maybe you have something and be like, oh, that's a trip. You know, you tell me something. And it's just ping pong. We just got to have conversation. You know, even even though you, I mean, you've been in music and doing your entrepreneurship for like over a decade now, right? Man. Like, like, what's something that you look back at? I, I know you said you have like no regrets on like anything that you do, but what's something that you look back at and you say like, wow, I could have done something, oh, you know, I, I could have improved. I, I wish I had my business mind like, like how it is now and how I get excited off, off, um, investing and business mm-hmm. tactics. I wish I was on that when I was at like the peak of like I got grapes t- doing world tours. Like, body, I'll keep it lit, bro. I, I I did all that shit and I was just basically living a, a fucking party lifestyle mm-hmm. and not tripping off business, not tripping off like, ooh, what if I tapped in and did this and then we could scale this to where I can make money off weed? You know what I'm saying? Didn't trip off that ever. Now, it's a, my mind's different. Of course, I'm focusing on trying to do a couple cannabis moves. Mm-hmm. But back then, yeah, before you, cookies, <laughs> you would have been BC. Yeah. I always always make that joke. BC, <laughs> <laughs> but before cookies, <laughs> 2005 BC before cookies. Because at the end of the day, like yeah, you know what I'm saying. It was perp first, and then it was like you know what I'm saying. It's well, like, and also marijuana wasn't legal back then. I, but I got to be around the shit when it was they was trying to. I'm mm-hmm. I'm at all I'm about it. They would have me come to all I, like Oaksterdam. I would be the celebrity judge for all their little shit when it was like super like low key to be even in a place smoking weed indoors yeah. and we're all tasting all these different buds and all this shit. Wow. So I wish that I wish like it's it's a regret, but also man, fuck that. I live my life, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like man, I travel. The f- no one at the end of the day, it's like I'm I'm still doing music shit, but at the end of the day, it's like. Cats will be like, oh, he ain't doing this, doing that. Motherfucker, I already did it. That's the one thing that you ain't gonna you ain't gonna ever fuck me up on. It's like you're telling me now, bruh, check the motherfucking resume. I've been around the it's world like, and back off music. You know what I'm saying? Been world touring and shit. Lived the life, like, been on MTV, been on motherfucking, you name it, bruh. It's like mm. I, I I've I've already sampled it. So if, wow. if you one of these cats trying to t- to compare me now, motherfucker. You Get need off. to change. You need to change your mindset. That's yeah. how. That's how you don't succeed. Mm. Now you keep in score when you should just be scoring, 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 and fuck wow. the scoreboard. That's how I look at it. But I I deal with shit like that all the time because wow. motherfuckers wow. want to be you know talk sideways and shit like oh he but he ain't even doing that that motherfucker he old now he don't even motherfucker I been did this shit <laughs> bro I did this you shit think before I you were born bro <laughs> baby but you think I give a fuck. There ain't nothing you could tell me that like I don't. And plus at the end of the day I don't compare shit. I could give a fuck. Cause why would I want to look at you like I live a whole other different like like my life is nothing compared to anyone else. Mm-hmm. Cause we're all our own person, you know what I'm saying? They don't know what makes me happy, but they don't understand. That's why I be balling so much. Like my energy feel like I'm billionaire because, bro, I I pure happiness, bro. Wow. My I got my kids. They make me happy. I got I get to, I know what it feels like to be grateful to wake up, get my motherfucking cup of Starbucks, be at the gym, and like, bro, I feel rich as fuck. Cause it's like wow. that's happiness to me, pare. And then I could do all the other shit, do my music, do my businesses, the stuff I like. But just the those little things, I didn't think like that before. All I gave yeah. a fuck about was partying, 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 travel, partying, fucking partying, <laughs> bruh. I live that I life. It. I'm a real life I get Rick James to like Gary Vee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least that's a good balance to hey, have. I keep though. it lit. And I'm not ashamed. Like some cats are like, I don't want to talk about like my old life, or whatever. Like, fuck that shit. I did all that shit. You know what I mean? But it's cool. I lived it. And then now I'm like, okay, I when when I was partying a lot, I made a lot of regrets. Mm-hmm. And like I say, I don't want to live a life with no regrets no <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I got these little humans too that really fuck with me and they they I'm I'm, I'm their lapu lapu. Wow. So I don't want to ever. They would. My little kids will never ever see how I used to when I was wilding this shit ever. They yeah. might see some old shit on hey, YouTube. At, at least you were at least on DVDs. That, <laughs> well, at least that shit wasn't in the era where social media wasn't so prominent. Oh. So it's kinda, this shit's kind of it's just very very. Hit. I'm very lucky by that. <laughs> I, I I had some crazy shit happen to me, bro. Like back then, like it, it, it would have been bad for the kid if if, yeah. if if we had IG like you know from from fucking ex bitches going crazy on me and just. But thank God it was only tweets. 
Yeah. But they could have, what if they was scandalous and did some of the, sh- the shit the scandalous, these scandalous girls be doing today I mean, with videos and pictures, fucking put my lumpia out there. That would be crazy. Oh. That, I can't, but I don't, that, I wasn't in that era. Okay. I'm not in yeah, that yeah, area. You're good, nah. you're good. But see, he's like, oh yeah, shit. No. I'm, like, I'm over here just thinking, like, hmm. That ain't no, nah, bro. I just, it ain't, ain't going to happen, bro. Like, it ain't going to happen. Never. Oh, you ain't going to catch me slipping. Fuck that shit. But back then? Back could, then it would have been oh, done, bro. It would have been done. We had MySpace. Come on, man. To upload a fucking picture on MySpace took like a week. Come on, man. <laughs> and the motherfuckers get mad at your top eight. Like, Why ain't I on right now, bro? Why ain't I on? So, yeah, man. Oh, wow. Bro, this is this was an amazing fucking I love conversation. Talking. Hey, you you dope, man. You know, we chop it up, man. Yeah, and and it's real it recognized real. Body for real. I appreciate that for real. And, and especially coming from you, because once again, like I feel like if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have the people like Russ Kusan or, oh, wow, you know, man. like Ruby Ibarra like really popping off right now. Because I think all of us can really agree that you... And maybe even like Qbert too, you know Qbert being like the first DJ who like really popped yeah. off in the Bay, and also being Filipino. Like I look at you and Qbert and think like, wow, like these guys really made noise for us Filipinos and really represented us in the best way possible. You guys made hip hop look really fun, and you made hip hop a career choice. I think for also all of us. to add to that, I think we were just being like we were being ourselves, man. We weren't trying to like put anything that wasn't we just did us and it luckily we had like an audience and that audience could help sh- share and spread you know what i'm saying because man it's just crazy you say these names and i know all these people you know what i mean like we, we like i I, lo- I love seeing successful filipinos man i i i, I want it I want it, like I said, man, I want to start educating myself and learning like who who's up and coming on the entrepreneur side, not just clothing brands and all that stuff, but like b- real business, mm-hmm. um, startup company shit. And I also want to start tapping in with these Filipinos that are like uh, high school, college athletes. Because if I could find those people out, uh, we could all maybe figure it out. Maybe, you know, we help each other out. Then it's like, cool, now they got a fan base and now we, now we rooting for them. And yeah. when they do blow up, it's, it's like, like we our it's here. like our cousin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So queer. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But yeah, man, I, I I see it, man. It's our time to shine, bro. We need more movies out there. We need to keep on doing the podcast shit like this. Keep spreading the word. Keep talking. And you know, it's Lapu Lapu time. Lapu Lapu time. Hey, real quick. So you got to hear the album. Yeah. Did you get it all the way through? Do you have any did you did you have any other songs? I, I had was, a cu- I had a couple favorites actually. I, I like having these up. talks because uh so <laughs> f- f- funny, funny, funny thing, man. I did this whole album, Lapu Lapu, to the neck, meaning like at the house, no real studio. Good shit. While the kids is playing downstairs or sleep, you smell me, and just do, recorded a whole shit, mixed the whole shit, all on headphones, no speakers in, 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 my, in my little room studio, and pre-mastered it. And I had to send it out because I I, got, I was getting you know you, if you're your own engineer you could get frustrated on editing and shit like yeah, that yeah, and mastering yeah. sent it out and got it done and the only reason why I'm saying this y'all to y'all right now is like what the fuck's your excuse if you want to make something do that shit do just it. fucking do it stop saying oh I don't have no time for studio or I don't have you don't gotta bro I did all this shit at the house with the old, my old ass equipment that I still used I think on the Numpy Yard like the Yo, same that's microphone crazy. period it's like there's what the fuck would hold me back? Just yeah. do it. <laughs> you you think you got that from forty? Uh, like it's, the it's, whole the whole like independent mindset. Inspired, just... inspired. But I've always been like that body. Like I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like like look at my covers, man. I, I when I dropped the Nump Yard, I did three different album covers with the same album. Classic just album cover, by the way. I, I'm an ex comic book geek growing up, and I remember X Men One had three covers. You'd had to go every week to get that cover to make it a big collage. Right? Wasn't one green, one was It was just different characters. It was just different characters on X-Men. It was X-Men 1 when Mm -hmm. Jim Lee was the artist. Also, shout out Will Spartaccio. I actually got to tap in with him. He's one of the biggest comic book artists out there, Filipino. He did Wet Works. He did... um, uh, Fuck, what other one did he do? He did hella X-Men shit, though. But I actually got to tap in with him. It was cra- That's like crazy. It was a fanboy moment, bro. <laughs> we, we chopped it up because he did a. I'm in the movie Lumpia Two. There's a Lu- Lumpia Two movie coming out, comedy. When was the Lumpia One? <sighs> bro, nineties, the night or something like that. Oh, shit, I got it. So the same, the same, um, the same, uh, the same people. They came out with a finally part two. Uh, who's in it? Uh, Mark Munoz is in it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The dude from fucking uh, the Mexican dude, Danny Trejo. 
The, he's the, in it too. He's in it. He's the he's the fucking the um. Fuck? It's That's Lumpia. Crazy. It's Lumpia's versus fucking uh, Taquitos, basically. <laughs> and, uh, uh, my homegirl Katrina's on there. From um, she was just on this reality show. She does a double nation. She's a fucking dope ass actress. She's dope. And just a lot of like up and coming. Uh, you know Filipino. That yeah. that's gonna be a cool. The next day, the debut type movie yeah. like like Lumpia Two. Lumpia Two coming yeah. soon. Yeah, it's called Lumpia with a Vengeance. So yeah, check it out, man. Patricio, get it done, baby. <laughs> going, going back to your question, man. I, I will say, yes, please. Lapu Lapu, the album. I I, I want to say like a lot of my favorite records were probably Slap the Bass. Ah, so you bro, know what I sampled on that, right? A, no, I don't. I wanted to ask you that. I love you, man. The movie, I love you, man. About, that was on about there? the bromance, yeah. Where they're oh, like, wow. I slapped the bass, man. I slapped the bass big time. I didn't even realize that. Now when you watch the movie, you'll see Because when I heard it. the shit, I was like, wait, this sounds familiar. <laughs> yes. I just can't gravitate toward what it was. Bada, yeah, slap the bass. So I like taking shit I see in movies and just bringing it into the music yeah, yeah. and using that as my shit. But what I appreciate about it is that like, I think ever since the Nump Yard up into this day, yeah. you still keep everything so hyphy. Oh, yeah. I like... The and shit. I and I love it because the shit hyphy. I mean, hyphy is, has never been dead to me. Nice. And the fact that you're still running with the shit makes me feel so proud, as like a it's Bay my, Area native. My sound like, body, like I'm not gonna switch up for shit. I don't know no nothing else but what my shit is. So no, uh, Lapu Lapu movie. Yes. Hopefully we get that soon. Yes. Lumpia two. Any mm. any new music coming out? Just like, hey, go get the album. I would love to just get feedback from everybody of what, what you guys fuck with, what songs you like. Um, I did shoot a couple of Viz videos just to wake it up. Viz videos. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did the um, No Competition Rastafada video. There and then go. I got Loyalty is Rare video. All, I, and these are all videos that were uh, shot and edited by D1, who D1 is the producer of I Got Grapes. So he's a Damn, guy that bro. was making beats and then all of a sudden figured out the film shit, you know, all it's the same in house. shit. I love all it. in house, yeah. And I was we get excited to do it. So, but I got some videos we're about to shoot. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of my song called "My Bro" on the album. That so. shit was funny. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. So everybody, if you listen to the song "My Bro," I'm really gonna probably put. I'm gonna go all the way in. I'm gonna get some financial backing on this shit and really do it correct uh -huh. and like really push it like how these major uh, labels. Push, would push a record and and also saying ma major uh, labels that's my next goal y'all I'm trying to get on a major so mm -hmm. you heard it here first on the lunch table I felt like <laughs> I did it I did it all independent wise and I, I love the I love the the grit and grind but now I feel like I, I deserve the, the just the, the the opportunity and to get in the position of being in the meetings with majors just because I feel like I got a karate body in this shit I got a black belt in this shit already bro like not meaning that I'm the the best bar for bar, but when it comes to fucking the work ethic, going on tour, mm -hmm. recording, campaigning, networking, all the shit that comes with being an artist, I got a black belt in this shit. Mm -hmm. So when you're a black belt, it don't mean you're the best fucking fighter in the world, but it just shows you're at this you level and caliber top. that we're like, yeah, you you ready, set, go. You could match up with if this major artist is black belt too. I could go neck and neck with them and let's go on tour and let's really rock out and see who mm -hmm. fucking gets it in. That's where I feel I need to be at next not just for myself, for my fans. I think they would love to see that shit. And me being on a major label, to me, in my mind frame, is just like, boom, I got credit now. Not credit like props. Like, boom, I got like a fucking credit card <laughs> in this industry of like, <laughs> boom, now, because they that's what they do. They throw you fucking hella bread, and you now you it, figure out, okay, what do you want to do? And then you could use these other platforms. Well, now you would know what to use with that bread. Thank you. If I did that shit, like I said back then... I would have fucking, I would have partied been partying. this. Bruh, party, I would have been shit. <laughs> and hella in debt. <laughs> They're like, why we give this Filipino all this motherfucking money, man? He over here getting hella room service. He buying hella bottles, hella room service. I don't know who all these girls in the hotel be. <laughs> they over, he over here buying all these motherfucking shit. Like, that's what I was doing oh, with my own money. So I could only imagine with major label money. But yeah, you're right. So with that being said, I'm going to be pushing... Some of these new Viz videos, like my bro's gonna be something dope, and uh, I, man, I Here can't wait go. for y'all to see it. Just I know it's it's, it, it's it's gonna be on some like I wanted to go like I want I wanted to get out there, man. I th I think that could be a college run, and I'm gonna and, I, and I'll bust a move on there, man. I'm, I ain't gonna lie, if they hit me to perform that shit, I'm gonna get a mask and just perform with a mask. Fuck I wanna it. I wanna freak that shit. I'm gonna do the Jabberwockies on them, bro. They don't want to see this gorilla like, Pino. They did it. Yeah, so I can do it too. I'm gonna get an emoji mask, bro, on everything. <laughs> 
the brown one though. And I ain't like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Just just uh just to leak a little bit on the video, my bro. I'm not even gonna be in it. I'm I'm gonna book all these college kids, and oh, fraternity shit. guys to rap my lyrics. So when you see the my bro, cause that's who it's made for, bro. Like, yeah, bro. <laughs> What's up, bro? Let's smoke a doobie, bro. <laughs> it's funny, man. I made that song. It was just a joke. I swear to God, I was just like. I meet cats and they're like, man, it's so crazy just meeting you, Nump. I'm with my bro, Nump. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, what's up, bro? Like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it, was just, it was just a funny inside joke and yeah. I made it like that and usually those are the ones. That, that, that definitely is the one, bro. Thank you, bro. Lapu Lapu Thank you, bro. out right now. Yes, sir. The legendary Nump Trump, Nump, the Gorilla Pino Pope. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Get you, hey, go get, hey, tap it with me on my IG, Nump underscore you underscore film underscore me underscore Beast Mobile, and I, I, I did, check it out. I don't have a website. I just do everything on on the IG. We got the Pate T-shirts, Gorilla Pino Strength, uh, roll your rolling up Lumpia. I do all this shit strictly to, to the neck, bro, for Thank real. You, bro. And we we were pretty successful, man. Since July, we probably dumped a, a thousand pieces worth worth of merch all wow. in house. So thank you to everyone supporting the Gorilla Pino Strength shit, and I'm dropping hats soon, and it does take up a lot of my time, but me being like a stay-at-home dad and wiggling, like, I had, see, y'all don't understand, I got five kids, y'all, so what is your excuse? I got five what kids, is your excuse? I'm, I'm selling my own merch out the trunk, doing music when I can, running businesses, and you know what I'm saying? But you gotta have your priorities in check. Respect the motherfucking hustle. And let me give you some real quick words of motivation, motivation, stay patient and persistent. You know what I'm saying? Your time gonna come, man. I swear to God, I, those are my two words that I always use. You know what I'm saying? And be thankful and grateful. And that's that's why I tell my kids all the time. So if you put all that together, I don't think you can you lose. can't lose. Because you're gonna feel great. Yeah. It's all about feeling good like shit. You're gonna feel rich. Right? I swear, you could do this show here, how you doing it now, or if we went to a motherfucking Universal Studio, whatever, like whatever big studio, and it would not make a difference. Nah, it would feel the same shit. You would probably miss this more right here because this is this is you. Yeah. This is you from the wow. ground up, are they? Wow, bro. All mamas. Uh, man. This is the lunch table. <laughs> Food for thought. I'm Nico Blitz. <laughs> Nump. And we are Nico everybody. Blitz from the video game Blitz. That's how you got his name. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs>